Right, I'm here with Nathan Fox, one of uh, GB's future rising stars in the triple jump. Nathan, nice to meet you. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Yeah. Now, first of all, before we get off, I'd like to congratulate you about your PB. Can you tell me about it and your feelings and how it went? Um, it's a funny story, actually, because I wasn't actually meant to compete that day. I jumped the, my personal best. Okay. Um, originally, I had my eye on the Bedford International Games, which was the next day. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't sure whether I'll be able to compete at the um, club event on the Saturday and compete to my best ability on the Sunday. Okay. So it wasn't until my coach convinced me that I was in the shape to, to jump far across the board. He said, no, nah, just go for it. And um, yeah, it turned out to be a really, really good competition. So you're glad you've done it in yeah. the end. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you class as like, would you class it as one of your most satisfying successes in your, in your early career so far? Um, definitely, I mean, the 60 meter barrier has been one of those goals that I've been I've been trying to hit ever since I hit 15 meters back in 2007. Yeah, I've always been looking to the next barrier, and 60 meters was was. When was barrier. it 1629? Yeah, 16 was it? Yeah, 29. So yeah, it was a really it was a really big breakthrough for me. So you know you played rugby, I heard. Yeah. Uh, for Hertfordshire, um, you know. What age was it that you made that transition? Because obviously you, you had to do both of them yeah. at the same time, you know, what, what was it that... Um, I think the transition age was 16 years old. Yeah. Um, as you said, I was playing Hertfordshire rugby for under 16s. Um, I was also playing for Middlesex. Really? At, um, basketball. Okay. And then I got the GB call up, which was what cemented it for me. Yeah. I've always wanted to jump or represent my country at a sport. Okay. And getting that international call out for triple jump at the age of 16 was, um, I think, what made my mind. Okay, and so, you know, what age did you actually start triple jump? I mean, did you start the other sports at the same time or was it a thing that, you know, you, you triple jump was always your main focus? Um, no, triple jump hasn't always been my main focus. I mean, started off like everyone does playing football. Yeah, yeah. Then I um, evolved into basketball and then got introduced to rugby at um, secondary school. Okay. So I was playing basketball and rugby pretty competitively yeah. um, up until the age of year of 16. Yeah. I only started doing triple jump at 13, 14 years old yeah. um, because they don't introduce it to, to kids because it's quite strenuous on the, on the joints and yeah. the muscles. Yeah. So um, 13, 14 was when I started triple jumping. Okay, and would you class that as quite a, a late Late time to start now, no, that's, or that's probably just, early. That's, okay. that's probably the earliest you can start triple jumping. Yeah, in this country anyway. So. Okay, so you know you have you know now you're you're fully rounded triple jump mm -hmm. athlete. You've got uh, your coach, uh, mentor, I believe, who is Larry Achike, yes. is it? <laughs> and you know how important of a role has he got in your career? Um, he's played a very big role. He's been coaching me since I was 17. Wow. So in 2008. Yeah. That's when he started coaching me, and I was just coming off the back end of a really serious injury then yeah so he's guided me from from that injured athlete to jump in 16 29 and so he, he's obviously given you um, you know that confidence again coming back from injury yeah, it must definitely. be real hard to, to get back definitely. Um, and obviously he's he also competed for GB yeah. and I believe was he two-time Olympic finalist two -time was Olympic it finalist and he's also won the Commonwealth Games well so I mean you you're, you've got the best advice yeah. around you so I'm sure that's uh, real inspiring yeah definitely he's been around the block um, more than once yeah so anything he says has to be listened upon yeah he's definitely got the knowledge definitely so what inspires you to be the best you can be? Um, I think once you taste that bit of success, mm. I mean I tasted a little bit of success when I was 14. Yeah. Um, I broke the UK British all-time record for triple jump. So I was earmarked as one of the triple jumpers for the future, um, representing my country at 16. And um, again broke 60 metre barrier just last month. So yeah. those many achievements that I want to always strive to hit the next target just to push myself to be the best I can be. So you, it's just a, a hunger thing, like you say, once you taste the success and you, you know you've got those right people around you, it's a thing of you just want more and Definitely. more. The yeah, okay. Just like that, yeah. Cool. So we're obviously here at Brunel University. Uh -huh. Is this somewhere that you're based as well? Yeah, um, I'm studying international business at Brunel. Okay. So it kind of fits in well. We've got excellent facilities. I'm also a sports scholarship at the uni. Yeah. So they help out with providing facilities like this for us. We've also got a great indoor track and an indoor gym to train in during the 
winter months. Yeah. So yeah, it kind of fits it really well. Right? So and then you've obviously got other athletes you train with here. Yeah. Are they all part of the university? And you're, not, you're not all the athletes together? are. Okay. We have a quite quite big group, quite popular group. It's uh, got a lot of talent in there, a lot of established athletes. Um, the majority of us are Bruno athletes. Yeah. But some of them aren't. Okay. And what's the best piece of advice you've been given, and how do you actually put that into practice or into competition? Because you know you could have all the advice in the world, but mm -hmm. when you're there in front of the crowd, yeah. you know, and you, you just remembering that kind of sound advice, yeah. how, how do you put that into play? Uh, the best piece of advice that I've been given is um, you work hard in the winter, but you show off in the summer. Okay. So the winter months is where you put in all that hardcore work, yeah. all the, the base work, all the grounding that you need. And in the summer, when it comes to competition, you just got to tell yourself that you've done all the work that you need to do to perform. Yeah. So as long as you just let your body take over and remember the training, then you should be fine. So it's just kind of like knowing you, you've you've done all that work, it's all in the bank and just to exactly. let yourself go and exactly. let it let it all happen. When people, when people see athletics in the summer, they, they see all the fast times and the and the far, and the and the jumping far. Yeah. But what they don't see is the hard work, the hard work. beforehand. Yeah. But we see that and yeah. we know that we've done that. So when it comes to, to competing, that's all you've got to remember. And I guess in some ways like just the jump is the easiest thing. Yeah. It's like, like you said, yeah. it's the training before. Yeah. It's that you know. I don't. I mean, I'm sure you wake up early in the mornings. Your diet is strict, yeah. and you know there'll probably be sometimes that you wake up and don't want to train. Yeah. But I guess you have that goal in mind. I definitely, believe. definitely. The, the goal, the end goal, is always what what keeps you motivated. And keeps yeah. you Working when you're running up hills, pushing cars, yeah. running <laughs> 400 meters, which I hate. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, the end goal, seeing yourself winning a competition, yeah. jumping a personal best or even just making a team yeah that that's what really drives you on good stuff so um, what advice would you give youngsters that want to get involved into into triple jump um, first of all I'd say try out all the athletic events yeah because there's a range you yeah. never know what you're good at yeah when I started I started off doing 100 and 200 meters and plus like you said you was doing rugby yeah. as well so, so I, I think it's good to ground yourself with a lot of different sports because you never know what you're gonna be good at yeah because I started off doing 100 meters then went on to long jump and then eventually found triple jump. Yeah. So I'd say just have fun with all the events before you want to decide yeah. what you want to do. And you know, you've obviously done your PB. Um, now I know the athletic seasons is different to a lot of other sports seasons. What's your ambitions short term, and from then, what is it long term as well? Um, well, we're coming up to the end of the season. Okay. I would like to hopefully push my personal best a little bit further. Do you want to get another yeah, people? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe closer to the 1650 mark if I can All right. beyond. Yeah. Um, for next year, we have the World Student Games and the World Championships. And in 2014, we have the Commonwealth Games on our doorstep again in Scotland. Yeah. So those are a few championships that I'm looking to, to hopefully make the team for. And um, long term, we've got to be looking for 2016. Yeah. So, um, hopefully get the gold medal then. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you know, obviously now, you know, the Olympics is on. You must, you know, you must feel happy for your teammates Definitely. that are in there. But also, you just, I'm sure you're like on the edge of your sofa yeah, yeah. wanting to be involved. It's really good watching it, but I can't wait until I'm actually yeah. in that atmosphere. Yeah. So I know I'll thrive under that, that okay. kind of type of competition. Now I'm going to ask you one question where you have to be honest, okay. no matter how bad. So we, we've discovered when we interview a lot of athletes, they have some superstitions. Mm -hmm. Now I've heard some wacky ones, I've heard all sorts. Yeah. Now you must have one as an athlete, I'm sure. Uh, it's very rare athletes do have them. Uh, what what are yours? A, a slight one. <laughs> well, in the morning, I, I always eat two wheat bix Two? Two wheat bix Okay. Two, maybe three sometimes. Oh, okay. Before competition. Yeah. And I tend to wear the same socks and underwear. Wow. <laughs> so that's like. The, the winning I don't know pair. <laughs> well, you got your PB, I was so when I dropped my PB, so and you had two wheat bits as well. Stick with it for the rest of my career. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can't say anything about that. So I hope you stick with those superstitions. <laughs> and do. it's nice to meet you. Thank you. All the best. Cheers. What was it called? Talent.